Okay, our next speaker, well, oh, she's already mic'd up, great. It is uh, Wendy Chen from Jackson Laboratories. We're gonna stay in this uh, animal model and eagle space. Um, and Wendy's actually been, um, over the last year and a half or so, um, working on um, engineering uh, various mouse models. She's in the CRISPR cast, and she's also gonna talk a little bit about some of the work that they've been doing, trying to do some, uh, some of the high throughput ways that she was generating more mice. <clears throat> I'd first like to thank Leon and uh, Michelle for the opportunity to share with you our experience in Jazz using CRISPR Cas to engineer the mouse freedom. I'd also like to thank you for being here. So um, for those of us who have been in the field for genetic engineering for some time, we are all familiar with this scheme. Not too long ago, if you need to engineer a mouse model, uh, you first need to engineer the mutation into mouse embryonic stem cells, and then from the mouse embryonic stem cells, you derive a mouse line out of it. Because of the... Um, Because of the um, opening to revolve of mouse embryonic stem cells, you know, you must use it in the process here. It comes with it, all the limitations of the technology. We all know that for many species uh, on planet Earth and only for rat and mice, we have germline competent embryonic stem cells. And then for the mouse um, as a species, and often the embryonic stem cell lines are available on a limited strain of mice, which is 129 and the black six injects, we have a few more strains, but um, the need for germline competent embryonic stem cells and really limit our choice to uh, limited species and strains, which is really um, cumbersome. So um, several years ago, we at JX were very pleased to see the coming online of the nucleus technology included using finger same thing with nuclease, and then uh, taken coming on board. So a group in Jax led by Dr. Michael Wiles has been exploring into nuclease technology and really having success using same thing with nuclease and taken to engineer the mouse genome. Uh, one thing I think we do really well in Jax is uh, our ability to work with the whole panel of impact strains of mice. As you can see in the panel here, Michael's group uh, were able to generate Animal models using zinc nucleus and Taylor is on black 6J, uh, black 6 again, I got somewhere as well. And then, um, particularly some of the more uh, unusual strains, the NSG and then NRG, even for the cast strain, which is almost like an alien in the mouse world. Um, so, in Jax, we were able to generate animal models using the nucleus technology. So uh, back in 2013, we were very happy to have uh, Dr. Harvey Wang from the Danish lab, John Jazz, as a PI at the end of 2013. And so together, we were exploring into the crispr gas techno technology to engineer the mouse <coughs> And So in the last one and a half years, we have accumulated quite some um, experience using CRISPR tests to engineer the genome. So we're very impressed by uh, basically two features of the system. One is uh, it's simply very really simple, the system. So all, for every new target you would like to engineer the mutation, you just need to re-engineer the guide RNA uh, as even good and Keith and uh, Winston explained earlier, you just need to engineer a new guide RNA for the target of interest. And then for normal animal models, you may need to synthesize a donor oligonucleotide or a sample of donor plastic, and then you make it into a mixture. You inject three weeks later, nice and long, and then you genotypenize when they are two or three weeks old. So uh, the other feature is really the timeline. 
for the timeline, uh, mainly use the, the timeline to assemble the donor vectors. So um, the timeline with this system is much better as compared to the timeline using conventional gene in, in embryonic stem cells. Uh, so at this time in JAX, we have about uh, 140 models in our production line, which includes 82 knockout models and 16 knocking models. And then um, at this, we also genotyped 63 models for the knockout models and were able to identify 60 uh, founders for 60 models. And around the 20, uh, 31 models we screened, we were able to identify factors for 25 models uh, for the knocking models. And the nature of the knocking models includes point mutation, the tag insertion, including the GX flag tag, peace tag, and uh, the D5 tag. And uh, we have several lost key models in the production line, and I think the, uh, the first model was very promising. We also have some models with reported insertion, and then exons work basically mouse, uh, mouse sequence with the human sequence. So um, combining with some other a la carte crystal projects from JX, we actually have um, experience handling more than 200 uh, crystal models in JX. As mentioned earlier, uh, in JAX, one thing we really know how to do is to work with the infrared strains of mice. In this uh, table here, I summarized our experience on several of the major infrared strains of mice. As you can see, Black 6 J, Black 6 NJ, NOD, NSG, NRG, more challenging DBA, and then uh, BSSB. We have all been able to derive from the mice using crystal tests. And so the overall founder efficiency is about 33%. What that means is uh, if you screen 10 mice and maybe you identify um, three among um, the 10 being carrying your intended mutation. And so one thing I must mention is the data here is um, we generated early in our process where we have not been implemented by the evaluation platform to screen the guides. So whatever guides that have been used to generate these models here, they are fresh from some of the online software tools. So now we have, um, since, uh, since then, we have now implemented the platform to pre-screen the guides before we inject the guides. In. And so uh, it looks like uh, the um, efficiency here should be much better moving forward. Oh, okay. um, so then uh, I also want to share with you, we have been using CRISPR to multiplex, to target more than one gene at a time. In this table here, I show you our efforts using one guide per gene to target two genes at the same time. And then when we have the randomized, and then we use a program here called the type program, which is uh, in principle and electronic cocoa forming. Using the program, uh, what we need to do is to input the wild type sequence and then the mutant sequence and then you tell the program where your type sequence is and then it um, decomposes all the alleles in each factor for you to tell you how many alleles there are in each factor and what are the alleles. So uh, it's very obvious that uh, for this project, we have been very successful. For majority of the founders, we <coughs> analyze and they all work out as a double work out uh, for both the genes. And actually, since then, also for one phenotypic analysis of this founder mice, and uh, they really work out as uh, we thought they should. We have also used CRISPR to multiplex to, uh, to target three genes at the same time. In this experiment, the guide for gene 2 didn't work out as well as those for gene 1 and gene 3, but then from the limited number of mice who screened, and we were able to identify one factor that actually should work out as a triple knockout. Um, 
as I mentioned, mentioned earlier, uh, when we use embryonic stem cells, we often you know, generate the animal model on 129 or plexis. And then the common practice um, in the past is to use speed congenics, uh, spending the next one and a half or two or three years migrating the allele into another strain. With the crystal, you actually do not need to do that anymore. So in this slide here, I show you the same gene that we hybrid into three strains. So back in May, we have we uh, used the guide one and guide two to create a knockout model of the North strain. And then when everything went well, uh, the PI asked us to generate the model on BXSB. And then in October, we generated the model on the Lexis J. So, um, so with the CRISPR, you can really um, have access to many of the index strains of mice, almost any strain of your choice here, saving your time, uh, not needing to migrate with the um, real by breeding. And so for now, in animal models, and as mentioned earlier, we have experienced using CRISPR to perform a whole range of genetic uh, modifications to the genome. I think the only thing we have not done is actually larger scale genetic swapping. So if you would like, a, I think for pharmaceuticals and you're interested in replacing a mouse gene with a human autolog, the best way to do that would be to replace the exome structure of the mouse gene with a human autolog and sometimes uh, the average size of the gene could be 10 pp or 20 pp. We have several projects in our pipeline there as um, SRD efforts, so we are not there yet, but almost everything else we have done with, with CRISPR. Um, so our success is uh, we currently have over 60 Vulcan models in our production line. Among the 31 models, we genotype and we were able to identify factors for 25 of the 31 models. Targeting efficiency really varies, and for some models we didn't identify the founder, but for some other models the targeting efficiency could be as high as 50%. Uh, what actually caught us with a huge um, surprise is uh, homozygotes actually often um, are spotted on the founder mechanism, which is actually a very sad um, sighting. So, um, so that's actually quite nice because what that means is at the founder stage you can analyze the phenotype. So um, I have three slides here to show you the example of several models we have from the production line. This is the first of the animal model from our production line. So the goal was to change the CTT codon into CAT. Uh, we screened the 27 mice, 14 were found to, uh, to carry in their mutation, and two were found to carry the not in mutation, as you can see the appearance of the uh, mutant A sequencing yeah. chase there. Um, and then in this same one, because we also have um, homozygote knockouts, so we need to move from, from the time we start the project to the time we identify the factor mice, we have homozygote knockouts, we have two knockout models, and so it worked out very well uh, for the PI. This is the other model that we uh, intend to insert the B5 tag into the before the start codon of the last exon. And so we actually had only six mice gone, but then three out of the six mice were found to carry the B5 uh, tag insertion as shown over here. So um, this strain is also a very challenging strain to work with. It's the PBA2J uh, strain. Uh, so we're very happy to see, although we had only six mice gone, but three were identified as founder. One of the newer models uh, we have in our pipeline is uh, transgene insertion into browser locus, as many of you are familiar. Browser locus uh, has been used as a safe landing pad for transgene incorporation. So uh, in this project here, we intend to insert a 4 kb transgene into the uh, intel of the browser locus. Uh, the transgene is 4 kb in size and carry gloss, uh, glosses that gloss and then transgene um, 
driven by its own promoter. We tried two principal strategies. The first strategy, we used a single guide. We had uh, 13 miles long. We didn't identify any founders, but then the need case strategy, we had only three miles long, but then two out of the three miles were run by um, long range PCR to have chest gene incorporation into the girls of locals. And um, these two factors have also been read, and now we have an ox form of an ox chest gene to the uh, F1 mice, and we have a sample form of going, but uh, we have long range PCR for the five factors and five and all confirming successful incorporation of the chest gene into the girls of locals. So we're very pleased to see that. So um, I want to briefly mention a little bit our effort in Jack's here. Um, so we all know that in CRISPR cas and in the you know uh, we commonly use nuclear injection to deliver the CRISPR. Per case created into the proliferate of the one cell embryo. So, if that's we were actually looking into replacing proliferate injection with um, <coughs> formation because, uh, this, you know, with a proliferate injection, you need uh, expensive equipment, you also need micro injection needs uh, with a lot of training, and then embryos to inject it one at a time, which can really limit the throughput in your experiment. So uh, together with the Hagi back in 2014, we um, some R&D work exploring introducing electroporation as a way to deliver crispr cas and really um, achieve very good progress. So in this experiment here, we target the tattoo locus on the, its design as an in project complex crispr cas reagent with a sing, uh, single-stranded donor oligonucleotide converting the naturally, naturally occurring ECOR5 site to the newly incorporated ECOR1 site. So in panel B here shows uh, 11 mice formed from electroporation and uh, when we cut the PCR fragment with ECOR5 and uh, 11 out of 11 mice show Bands um, resistant to E. coli digestion that shows a successful NHEJ obliterating the naturally occurring E. coli site. And then on top of that, three out of the 11 mice, number one, number four, and number 11, this one didn't show up too well, also shows PCR fragments now that can be cleaned by E. coli one site. And uh, we took a quant. And uh, so this eco R1 side coming through in the earlier. And we also um, sequenced the total form, which shows us the successful incorporation of the eco R1 side. So uh, we also performed a, a very limited off target analysis just to be sure that um, electroporation is not like a more crime to all party effect among the 14 sites for the four uh, for the four mice coming out of electroporation, we were not able to identify any all party heat uh, for mice that are born from electroporation. So then in Jax here we are looking into using electroporation to replace all um, micro injection and uh, doing it in a high throughput fashion and hope we can do more um, with this new technology. So with that, um, I will end my presentation here. Um, I have many people here in jazz who want to um, deliver the production line and uh, uh, how it has really been uh, helpful in building the platform in jazz there. And so I really want to especially thank you for this uh, part of this opportunity in jazz. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? Yes, Robert. Uh, as a question, the efficiency of electroporation, uh, how much sanitary do you see uh, uh, on the universe's target and how it affects the universe? Yes, sir. Uh, 
intellectual cooperation actually surprisingly seems to be less uh, invasive as compared to pro-nuclear injection. So uh, among the embryos, we intellectual cooperated the birth rate seems to be higher. Um, so, so far, we have been able to um, successfully generate knockout models uh, on three sites. Um, so not in animal models, we have been able to generate not in animals uh, Live, um, mediated by donor oligonucleotide. type. What we are exploring right now is a uh, successful model in, um, mediated by double plastic. That's uh, something that we are in place. But this is uh, going to out around uh, some deep restraints of mice, which should not be a problem with the donor oligonucleotide type mediated HDR. Not in, uh, it should be okay. Well, plastic is something that's unknown right now. That's what we are in place. For the data for Dr. R1 data you showed, that was the donor model, right? Donor model, yes. yes. Well, at least that rate seemed pretty impressive, you know, you're getting about 40%. Yes, sir. Uh, so, is that, you did that same experiment with micro injection, is your efficiency? Uh, with the tech lab. exploration as well? Yeah, with the tech lab, we actually did not do uh, it by injection, uh, so we did not have a direct comparison. But uh, the tech lab experiment, we have been able to reproduce uh, several times now by electro correlation, by even uh, changing the parameters of electro correlation to see the straight.